The Lion vs. Tiger debate has probably ruined more friendships than the Marvel vs. DC debate. You see, the fandoms of these two oversized kitty cats might be one of the most toxic there is, and when the discussion of which of them would win in a fight arises, all humanity and basic logic goes out the window. So today, I will once and for all settle the debate by declaring an actual winner based on actual facts. And I don't really hold a favourite myself, as big cats aren't even remotely close to beating my favourite animal, the ball-biting honey badger. Now, there are several metrics we need to consider when grading their battle stats. First up, we have all the measurable metrics like their size, speed, agility, strength, weaponry, defenses, and fighting experience. Lastly, we shall also go over some historical evidence, which should be taken with a grain of salt, as it could be pretty inaccurate. The battlegrounds will also be set in a neutral place, where none of them have any distinct advantages. We shall also be using the average maximum weight of a male African lion, and the same for a male Siberian tiger. Now let's take a look at their size differences. You are probably aware that both lions and tigers are absolute units in their own right. The Siberian tiger can weigh up to around 675 pounds or 306 kilograms, and some of them reach lengths up to 10 feet or over 3 meters, including the tail. They also stand at around 3.9 feet or 1.2 meters at the shoulder. If you have a hard time visualizing just how massive this actually is, just take a look at your mum. Anyway, here are a few pictures with a human as reference. A true beast indeed. The lion, on the other hand, is usually significantly lighter, with a weight of around 550 pounds or 250 kilograms. However, they can reach the same length of around 10 feet or over 3 meters and the same height of 3.9 feet or 1.2 meters. The reason for their significant weight difference, despite being roughly the same size, is something we will get back to later in the video, as it is actually very important for the outcome of this showdown. But either way, we have to give the tiger the first point for its significant size advantage. Next, Next, we are going to take a look at their raw physical strength. Now, this is where we have to speculate a bit, as we can't really just search up their bench numbers. But what we can do is look at what their day-to-day -day looks like, which could give us some good clues. The tiger, even with its immense size, is known for its climbing abilities, which is something the lion isn't really that good at. Just imagine the amount of strength needed to pull over 600 pounds of mass up a tree with relative ease. This brute strength is something I really don't think the lion possesses in the same way. In addition to this, tigers are solitary creatures, which means means that they are more reliant on their brute strength to take down larger prey on their own. Unlike lions, which have developed a very sophisticated way of hunting in groups, relying more on their endurance and group coordination. If you are still not convinced, remember how I said that the tiger's weight advantage is very important. Well, the reason being that the tiger in general has a lot more muscle mass than lions. You see, tigers hold around 72% muscle mass, while the lion has around 58% muscle mass. So even though they seem to be the same size, tigers are a lot denser and have a more robust build, as muscle tissue is heavier than fat tissue. So in terms of raw untamed strength, I have to give the point to the tiger here as well, putting it in a two-point lead. Now before you go down to the comments section telling me how I am favoring the tiger, just stick around for the next few metrics. You see, next we need to look at one of the more important attributes in this showdown, namely their defenses. Here, the lion has a major advantage. This big advantage comes from its majestic and thick mane around its neck. The mane will basically render any early game ending blows highly unlikely, which means that the tiger's specialty which is going straight for the balls. Uh, I mean the neck isn't really going to work that well. The Siberian tiger does have some compensation for this though, as it has way thicker and more insulating fur in general, something that is paramount for surviving in the extremely cold temperatures it lives in. But still, here the point definitely goes to the lion. Now it's only logical that we take a look at their weaponry. The tiger has massive canines, measuring up to 4 inches or 10 centimeters in length, while the lion's canines are slightly smaller at 3 inches or 7.5 centimeters, just like your both of them can have claws, as big as their canines. But the Siberian tiger also has bigger paws, as it needs them to better distribute its fat ass when walking in deep snow. So the tiger takes yet another point here. And if you are wondering why I did not include their bite forces, it's because it's very speculative, as all the sources I could find showed different results. But both of them are able to break bones, so it doesn't really matter anyway. When it comes to speed and endurance, they are very similar, as they both have pretty poor stamina. But they can reach incredible speeds over short distances. You see, both lions and tigers rely on on their stealth by getting as close as possible to their prey before bursting into an intense but short attack. Now, lions do actually have a pretty large speed advantage, reaching over 50 miles per hour or 
80 km per hour, while the Tiger can reach around 37 miles per hour, or 60 km per hour. This makes a lot of sense considering their larger and heavier build. So this is a clear point to the Lion, and they are now standing pretty equal in terms of points. Agility will also be very important to consider for this scenario. And this is also the first metric where I don't think the winner is all that clear, as they both can showcase some really impressive feats of agility. The two of them being able to jump vertically over 10 feet and covering almost 40 feet while running and jumping. But we can't forget that unlike lions, tigers also excel at climbing, which does indeed display a very high acrobatic level, especially considering their heavier weight. So I'm going to give it to the tiger, putting it once again in the lead. So far, we have only been looking at metrics that we could actually search up and compare. But when it comes to their respective fighting experience, we have to make some assumptions. So this category won't directly add a point, but it will be important when deciding the final winner. A male lion and a male Siberian tiger live very different lives. The tiger being a sigma with no friends or family, while the lion often has its own harem. Each of these lifestyles comes with its own benefits. The tiger, for example, will have more experience taking down prey on its own, as it can't rely on anyone but itself, making it a formidable, life-cancelling machine indeed. A male lion, on the other hand, will have a lot more experience when it comes to actually fighting other big cats, as it constantly has to fend off other beta soy boys from taking its role as alpha. Lions also have to fight off other powerful predators on a daily basis, like packs of hyenas, and let's not forget the ball-biting honey badger. This fighting experience is arguably more valuable than that of the tiger. Anyways, here is the final scorecard, and as you can see, the tiger is up by only one point. Some of you may find this a bit surprising, as you probably expected the tiger to absolutely annihilate the king of the jungle with ease. But the lion does have some advantages, like its thick mane, protecting it from the tiger's ungodly throat game. The lion also has more experience fighting other large cats, unlike the tiger, which usually only has experience taking down grass-eating soy boys. But remember that some of these metrics, like the tiger's size advantage, will be a lot more significant than others like their running speed, as they can't really use that effectively in the fight. Now, even though the tiger has a lot of advantages on paper, this battle would likely not be over quickly, as the lion's mother didn't raise no quitter. Lions are also known to give it their all until the very end, so this brawl would more than likely be a display of tenacity and heart, more than a competition of who's the better life-canceling machine. If I had to place my money on one of them, I would choose the tiger based on its significant advantages, which make it more likely to win. But then again, I wouldn't be surprised to see the king of the jungle walk out victorious victorious either. Showdowns like these are a lot more complex than what a lot of people want to believe. It's tempting to say the tiger is bigger, therefore it wins every time, but reality is often disappointing. Just look at the honey badger, for example, which is over 20 times smaller than a lion on average, but still able to hold its own in some scenarios. And in this scenario, it's only around 110 pounds or 50 kilograms separating them, which, with the right attack plan, could quickly level the playing field. Now, I did say that I was going to present some historical evidence as well, but the fact-checking of these events has been nearly impossible. Only one thing is for sure, they have fought each other several times, both in the wild and in captivity. And from what I could gather, there are actually several cases where the lion did indeed win the altercations, but then again, the size and species are never stated, rendering this information unusable for this video. Anyways, that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, then maybe watch some of my other videos on screen, and I will see you in the next one.